Hello, welcome back. We're jumping back into DaVinci Resolve. We're going to take a look at the planar tracker, which is kind of like the point tracker, but a lot better. Let's get started. All right, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and I've got a clip lined up and ready to go. You'll see I have the same clip here twice because it actually works perfectly for both of the ways that we can use the planar tracker and if we play this you'll see it's just a guy riding his bike on the street it's a little bit shaky it's got some handheld motion and we're going to track it and we're going to do a couple things so let's actually talk about what we can do with the planar tracker like i said it's a lot like the point tracker so we can use it to stick things on top of other things and we can also use it to stabilize Footage. The big difference here is instead of selecting single points like we do with the point tracker, with the planar tracker, we are actually choosing full areas to track and it's going to add multiple points automatically. And this actually helps us get a better grasp on not only the movement forward and backwards and side to side, but also the perspective and the scale of what we're tracking, which can give us a more accurate track. It can give us more realistic compositions. It's really great. And because we can track all of these things and get a better grasp on how the camera is moving and how the footage is moving, it also makes for a better stabilization. And don't worry if that sounded super confusing, it's going to be a lot simpler once we dive into DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got my first clip here. I've already turned it into a fusion clip. So we're just going to select it and we're going to head into the fusion page. And as usual, we've got our media in right here and our media out right here. And what we need to do is stick a planar tracker in between media in and media out. So we'll make sure media in is selected. We'll hit shift space on our keyboard and we will search for planar. There we go. We've got our planar tracker right here. We'll select that, click add, and there we go. We've got our planar tracker. Next thing we need to do is to choose the region that we're going to be tracking. Now there's a couple pointers here. First of all, we want a region that has some high contrast points for the tracker to hold on to. Also, we want it to be nice and big and we want it to be covered up by other objects as little as possible. This is going to give us the cleanest track. Now this wall right here, if we just scrub through our footage, you'll see that this wall up here is actually perfect. So what we're going to do is come back to the beginning and we're just going to create a little box around our wall. So we'll put a point here, a point here, a point here, a point here, and then we'll close it off. Next thing we need to do is come into our inspector and we've got a couple options here. First of all, we've got operation mode. We are going to be tracking, so we'll keep it on track. Reference time. This is super, super important. We need to tell the tracker what frame we're tracking from. If we don't do that, then it's going to be uh, it's going to be a mess. It's just not going to track for you. It's going to throw an error message. We don't want that. We don't like error messages. So in this case, we are tracking from frame zero so we can keep our reference time at frame zero. But if we wanted to start tracking, let's say from frame 215, we could adjust our window here. There we go. And we could come over to reference time and hit set and we'd be at frame to 15. Let me go ahead and reset this real quick. And then below our operation mode and reference time, we have a little section that's minimized called pattern. Pattern we don't really need to worry about. We can move our box left and right, up and down. We can change the rotation. We can change the size. We can invert it. So we would be tracking outside of this area instead of inside of this area. And then below that, we're actually going to dial in the operation of our tracker. So we're under tracker, we've got point and hybrid point area. Hybrid point area is basically the thing that I always choose and the thing that I always encourage other people to choose. It just gives you 
a more accurate track because it's not just looking at the points, it's looking at the area as a whole. If you're going to be doing things like tracking perspective and stuff like that, then you really want hybrid point area. Motion type, we've got a few other options. We've got perspective, which is the default. We've got affine, which is translation, rotation, scale, and shear. And we've got translation, rotation, and scale, translation, rotation, and translation. Now, translation is basically up, down, left, right. Rotation also deals with, well, rotation. Translation, rotation, and scale is translation, rotation, and scale. How big is the area? How is the size of the area changing as it tracks through the clip? Affine and perspective are kind of almost the same thing. Affine will deal with translation, rotation, scale, and shear, which is basically if I've got a box with parallel lines along my track, do those lines go like this at all? That is shear, and then perspective is more like this. It's a, uh, it's basically rotation on the Y axis, or is that the X axis? I can't remember, whatever. Now, in most cases for most basic compositions, we are going to be looking at translation, rotation, and scale. The further up towards the top of that list that you can get, the more accurate your track is gonna be. So we're going to choose translation, rotation, and scale and output is going to be background. Very rarely is it anything other than background. And our track channel, we're gonna keep as Luma, but you also have the option of doing red, green, blue, or custom. We typically stay with Luma. And once you have your tracker settings set, all you have to do is come down and we've got some options for tracking. We can track in reverse, we can track just one frame in reverse. We can stop the tracker, we can go one frame forward, or we can just track forward to the end. And then below that, we've got trim to start. So this will delete all the tracking data before the cursor point. This one here will delete all of the tracking data. This will delete all of the tracking data after a certain point. And this will show the splines of the track in the splines graph. We're not going to deal with that today. So we're all set up. Let's just go ahead and hit track forward. Oh, and there you go. There is our issue, our error message, because I forgot to switch it back to frame zero. So we'll go ahead and hit set. That goes back to zero. We can come back down here and we'll click track to end. And now we should be tracking. There it is. And it's a pretty quick track too. And when it's all said and done, your little box should be full of a whole bunch of little points. And if we come down to our little timeline, we'll see a whole bunch of keyframes. Those keyframes mean we had a successful track. Now, unlike the point tracker, the planar tracker does not act like a merge node, meaning we can't take whatever we're compositing on top of our background and attach it to the planar tracker. That's not how it works. What we need to do is create a planar transform. The planar transform is a node that has all of our tracking data in there and it sends that data to whatever we're compositing in to say, hey, this is where you need to be. This is the changing in size that you need, the change in position. It has all of that data in there. So what we need to do is make sure our planar tracker is selected, come over into our inspector and hit create planar transform. And once we do that, we'll see we've got our planar transform over here. And at this point, we've got our planar transform. This has all of our tracking data. So we don't actually need our planar tracker anymore. We could keep it around just in case our track didn't work out correctly. So we'll do that in this case, but really we could delete this and we'd be Fine. We could also keep it around if we wanted to track a second part of our footage, maybe composite something else on there using the planar tracker. We could use this planar tracker as many times as we want and create a bunch of different planar transforms so we have things composited all over the place. It's actually really cool. We could also keep it around if we wanted to stabilize the footage, but we're going to do that in the next clip. So in this case, what we're going to do is just simply, I guess, delete the planar tracker. 
Next thing we need to do is get our, whatever we're compositing on top of our image to the pipeline. So let's grab my little smiley face out of the media pool. I feel like this smiley face should be my official logo now. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. We'll go ahead and merge our smiley face over our background. And there we go. We've got our smiley face. Next thing we're going to do is take our planar transform. We're going to hold down shift and we're going to drag our planar transform in between our smiley face and our merge node. And there you go. Now from here, anything that we want to do to this smiley face, we need to do in between the smiley face and the planar transform. That way everything gets tracked together. So first thing we're going to do is we're gonna grab our old media two right here and we're going to add a transform node. And from there, we will resize our smiley face and we'll drag it over the side of our building. And here's a quick little pro tip. Sometimes when you're using the planar tracker, whatever you're compositing on top can get a little bit shaky, especially if you're using transforms to, you know, resize things, reposition things. The, the thing about the planar transform is it's a little bit picky. It only wants to composite things that are the same resolution as the background. Everything needs to be the same resolution. In this case, we have transformed this smiley face. It is no longer the same size as the background. So we're going to have our transform node selected. There's a little quick pro tip, we're going to hit shift space on our keyboard. We're going to search for crop and we're going to add a crop node like so. And what that crop node just did, if we come over into the inspector, you'll see X size 3840, Y size 2160. Now this whole little layer here is the same resolution as our background image. Yay. And now if we go back to the beginning and we play that back, you'll see our smiley face is tracking very, very nicely with the building. So that's the planar tracker's main function, compositing things on top of other things. It's great. I love it. It works amazing. I like it better than the point tracker. Honestly, it's super easy to use. It's super fast and yeah, it just works. As long as you remember that whole little resolution thing, it's, it's just great. Now let's move on to our second pipeline here. This is the same exact clip, but this time we're going to use the planar tracker to stabilize the footage. Really, really easy. This time we don't need to do a whole bunch of stuff to it. We're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to select media in, hit shift space on our keyboard, type in planar and add the planar tracker. Boom. Then with our planar tracker selected, we're going to come up to our image and we're going to track the same thing. We're going to track this wall right here. Let me just close off that region. Operation mode is going to be track. Reference time will be frame zero. Tracker is going to be hybrid point area. Motion type will do translation, rotation and scale. Maybe we'll actually go. We'll go hardcore this time. I think we're going to choose perspective. Output is going to be background. Track channel is going to be Luma. Let's go ahead and track to end. And there we go. We've got our track. Now all we have to do is come up into operation mode and hit stabilize. And if we come back to the beginning and we play this back, first of all, it's going to take a minute. There we go. We're going. But we've got that transparent background in the back. That's not going to work very well. So what we're going to have to do is add a transform node after our point tracker. And we're going to have to resize this image probably quite a bit until we don't see any more. There we go. I think we got it. So here's a before and an after. So there you go. You put things on top of other things. You stabilize footage. It's just like the point tracker, but it's just a whole lot better. It's a whole lot faster. I love it, but it's not my favorite. My absolute favorite. Well, you can learn about that by clicking right here. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.